In Climate Watch, 2020 was, of course, an unprecedented year. Turns out that's even true for climate change. A new report says last year was the hottest year globally on record, tying with 2016. And that wasn't the only climate record that was broken. The U.S. outdid itself for billion-dollar disasters. To talk to us about what all this means, let's bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Jeff, let's talk about that heat record. First, before we get to other news, just how hot was 2020? Yeah, it was tied for the hottest on record, about 1.25 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. So that's around 2.25 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial times. Now, it may sound like a lot of jargon, but, you know, the Paris Agreement wants us to stay below 1.5 degrees Celsius. We're, you know, this year we're at 1.25 Celsius. So we're getting really close. So uh, this was tied again for the warmest year on record. And why it's significant is because we had a La Nina, which is a cool episode in the Pacific. In 2016, it was a super El Nino. So we would expect a heat record in 2016. We would not expect a heat record in 2020. Mm. Gives you an idea of just how quickly things are warming because of human caused climate change. That does put it into a, a different type of perspective there. Well, Jeff, the last time that you and I spoke, the U.S. was on track to break its record for billion-dollar disasters, or at least one of the times that we spoke. It seems like we've been doing that a lot with all of the disasters we've been facing. With 2020 wrapped, mm -hmm. we can now say that it certainly did break that record with 22 in all. Are these disasters increasing in their frequency? What more can you tell us? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more billion-dollar disasters, so disasters that cost a billion dollars or more. Uh, the record before this year was 16. We've done that twice. This year, there were 22 disasters that cost a billion dollars or more. Uh, the fires in the West, unprecedented. We've never seen a fire season so bad. We had 12 landfalling tropical cyclones here in the U.S., Hurricane Laura, Hurricane Sally, Hurricane Delta. The derecho. Uh, which was a powerful mass, a mass of thunderstorms, a squall line that moved through Iowa, caused almost $8 billion of damage, you know, destroyed millions of, of acres of crops. So what's happening is we have more energy in the system. You have more energy, you're going to produce more extreme weather. Now, it's not just climate change. We also have more expensive stuff, and we like to live in places that are vulnerable, especially along the Gulf Coast, places that are near the water. So both of those factors combine to increase the amount of billion-dollar disasters. Since 1980, we've had around $2 trillion worth of damage uh, from these disasters, these climate disasters. Well, 2020 was a terrible year, but speaking uh, about 2021, it seems like things are not necessarily getting any better for us, Jeff. Uh, I understand that there's something strange happening right now at the North Pole. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, this is natural, uh, but it's astounding that it can happen. The temperature just spiked 100 degrees Fahrenheit in one week above the North Pole. Now, it's way above the North Pole, so it's about 50 to 100,000 feet up in the atmosphere. It's called a sudden stratospheric warming event. It happens naturally every couple of years, but climate science thinks that it's possible that, you know, the way that the Arctic is changing because of human-caused climate change, because of climate change, because of the lack of sea ice, that we're likely causing more of these sudden stratospheric warming events, and it disrupts the polar vortex. Now, uh, of course, we talk a lot about the polar vortex. What that is is the polar vortex is, is a strong circulation, really big, across the Arctic, and it lassos in the cold air. It doesn't allow it to escape. But when you get those really quick warmings around the North Pole and that kind of makes its way down into the lower atmosphere, it disrupts the polar vortex and it causes a convoluted jet stream and it causes surges of Arctic air across parts of the United States and all across the world. It's never the same exactly where that's going to be. Uh, but right now it's snowing like crazy in Spain. It's rare. It happens in Spain. But nevertheless, we're going to see a lot more of that eastern half of the United States. We're likely to see uh, lots of episodes of cold air over the next few weeks and the possibility of snowstorms as well. Having lived in Spain, that is indeed pretty crazy. All right, Jeff, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.